I'm going to show you how to write a native mobile application using PhoneGap, a mobile development framework that utilizes HTML5 and JavaScript to access the APIs of both the Android and iPhone and multiple devices that are out in the market today. On the PhoneGap website, you can also see what features are supported. You can access the phone's camera, the compass, the contacts list, etc., etc. So instead of writing in Java to create an Android app and then turning around and writing an Objective-C to create an iPhone app, you have a single code base in languages that most of us are already familiar with, such as HTML5, JavaScript, and CSS. Let's go to Developers, Getting Started, and the first thing we have to do is choose the platform that we're going to develop for first. I'm going to choose Android, uh, especially considering if you want to develop an iOS app, you have to have an Apple. Thanks, Apple. If we go into Android, you can see step two. They very clearly tell you the applications that you need to install. Starting with Eclipse. Eclipse is an IDE, an integrated development environment. Uh, this is a very popular open source application that currently, uh, as of this video, has well over half of the Java developers market. Um, if you go down, you see we have to install the Android SDK. It's a software development kit that provides us the pretty much a starter package for the tools that we need to develop an Android app. Then we have to finally install the ADT plugin. Uh, ADT stands for Android Development Tools. Uh, the most <clears throat> popular feature we want in this is the Android emulator. This will allow us to see what the application would look like on a mobile device. So we'll get started. I'm going to click on Eclipse and we want to get the classic version. Again, I'm using Windows. So now that I'm downloading that, <clears throat> I'll go back and then I'm going to download the Android SDK. And again, I'm going to use the Windows package. We'll actually save, uh, download the ADT plugin for a little later. Right now I'm going to go to my downloads folder since Eclipse is, uh, and the SDK is finished downloading. I'm going to first extract the Eclipse folder. Now that that's extracted, we're going to go ahead and install it. So we're going to click on the Eclipse executable. It's asking me what I want to use for my workspace. I'm going to use uh, leave it as default. All right, perfect. Now we are in Eclipse, uh, but remember we have to install the Android SDK now. So we're going to go back to the Downloads folder, click on the Windows Executable. And we'll install this guy. If you don't have the Android uh, GRE, you might that might be another prerequisite for you, but I think you should be good. This one's a lot faster, so I'm not going to cut the video. All right, so that's done. We can start the SDK manager. All right, now that the Android SDK manager loaded up, you can see uh, what I have installed and what I do not have installed. Um, I do have the Android SDK tools installed at uh, version 17 and I have what I what you have to have is at least one version of the Android uh, software uh, installed and I do not have that the newest version being 4.0.3 or the API 15 you can see um, I do not have any of that installed now if you wanted to write an app that uh, could also work on the um, you could verify would also work on the older devices you could uh, download the older APIs as well. But for us, it makes more sense just to download the newest version. So I'm going to click Install 15 Packages. To install the ADT plugin, we uh, use the instructions and links provided by PhoneGap. We come here and we can find uh, the instructions right in the Android's developer site. So if we um, do step one, go to and click. Uh, go into Eclipse and select Help Install New Service. So, Help uh, Install New Service. 
and we'll want to paste in this link that's right in the developer site. So we'll paste that here. We'll add site. We'll just say ADT. All right. So it took a little bit, but we can select the developer tools. Let's install all of these, and I'll click next, and then. Everything should be installed for us. Accept these terms, finish. You can see from this message here when I first installed the ADT going back into Eclipse, uh, I was warned that I didn't have a high enough version of the Android SDK. This version of the ADT required uh, revision 17. So, just to update that, I just went back into the um, Android SDK manager and uh, performed a couple updates. Another error I've seen a couple times come up on the web, and I actually had this myself, um, was saying a folder failed to be moved. And this is typically be, typically because you have a um, uh, antivirus uh, application blocking uh, the permissions of the uh, Android SDK manager. So you want to make sure you disable that. All right, and going back to the SDK manager, you can see that everything is now installed. I already downloaded the newest version of PhoneGap, so now I'm going to extract it. I'm actually going to extract it to my uh, desktop so it's easy, easily accessible. So now that I have PhoneGap extracted to the desktop, I'm going to go back into Eclipse, open up my PhoneGap instructions, and the next step is to create a new Android project. So I'm going to File, New, Android Project, and we're actually going to create a project from an existing source because in the latest version they have an Android example and we want to load load that. So if I go into the README, open it with WordPad and I scroll down, I can see in the instructions um, I actually want to um, create a project from existing source. So that's what we're going to do, create a project from existing source and we can name it a Cordova example and then the location is going to be um, my PhoneGap repository library Android example. So click OK. So now that this is loaded, um, I can actually run this application. So I'm going to uh, right click and run as Android application. And you'll see it's going to run my emulator pop in a second so we have our emulator running and it sometimes takes a little bit to load especially the first time you're running it um, but while that opens up I did want to show you um, you can actually choose the version of the emulator you want so let's say you upgraded to um, you didn't have the Android 4.0.3 in here you just go create new and you could create a new emulator based on uh, the Android version you wanted, and you can name that emulator every, anything you wanted. Um, but I already had that, so I'm good. So now that this is loaded, I'm going to unlock my screen, and we should see our application in a little bit here. Um, and it's since we loaded that example, it should uh, run with the uh, the default um, Cordova example. There it goes. It took a second. So yep, this is the standard uh, PhoneGap example that uh, was obviously provided by PhoneGap company and um, they allow you to test all the features like get picture vibrate um, some of these we can't really test through the emulator we're really just looking at the design if you want to test the get picture you'd actually have to uh, actually load that file onto your your phone um, but we'll do that in a different tutorial um, one thing two couple things I wanted to point out is in the assets this is where your index HTML file is so if we double click on that you can see um, the same thing we just saw in our emulator we can uh, obviously edit this file um, and another thing they included um, the main things are the jar file go to a jar file which used to be the phone gap jar file and then also within um, the WW folder is the uh, Cordova JavaScript file which also used to be uh, named phonegap.js um, so there you go. Um, that's we just created a PhoneGap application for the Android phone. So thank you.